Thank you very much. Thank you, Takashi, for the introduction, and thank you for coming. So I will discuss today a joint work with Michel Gros. on the Piadic Simpson correspondence. And the leitmotif of what I will explain in these three lectures is the fact that the Piadic Simpson correspondence I'm sorry, correspondence is a categorification of the hot state decomposition. Like the Cartier transform of August Vologotsky is a categorification of the decomposition of the Durham complex in characteristic P of, uh, uh, of the linear Lusy. So the Cartier transform of August Vologotsky. Okay, so to start, I will start from the hot state decomposition. So let me remind you uh, the statement. So let's fix K, a complete discrete valuation field of characteristic zero with algebraically closed residue field K of characteristic P. I will denote by OK the valuation ring of K. I will fix an algebraic closure K bar. K -bar. Denote by GK the Galois group of K bar over K. By OK bar, the integral closure of OK in K bar. The completion of OK bar will be denoted by OC, as usual. And C will be the fraction field of OC. Then I will set S to be the spectrum of OK. And S bar, the spectrum of OK bar. S will be the closed point of S, eta the generic point of S, and eta bar the generic point of S bar. So we know that for any proper and smooth variety, k variety, variety over k, there exists a canonical functorial gk equivariant. spectral sequence that we call the hot state spectral sequence which is an E2 spectral sequence E2 IJ equal the Hodge cohomology G XC over C twisted by minus J that converges to the et al cohomology of x k bar with coefficients in QP where we extend scalars to C. Okay. And in fact, this spectral sequence degenerates at E2. At E2. And uh, the abutment filtration splits, and these two statements are a consequence of a result of state on the Galois cohomology, namely that Hi of GK with coefficient in C of G equals zero for let's say E equals zero and one, and J not equal to zero. Okay, so this leads to a canonical functorial GK equivariant decomposition, which we call the hot state decomposition, Hn et al, of xk bar with coefficients in QP, when we extend scalars to C, is canonically the sum of the Hodge cohomology 
omega n minus i x c over c i minus n. So this was conjectured by Tate, as you know, and proved by independently by Faltings, Misiol, and Tsuji. And it was extended later to rigid analytic variety by Scholz. And in fact, it was Scholz who first observed the statement in terms of hot state spectral sequence, though it's implicit in the work of Faltings. So, uh, I would like to mention also that there exists a relative version of this. So, uh, there exists a relative hot state spectral sequence, by which I mean for morphisms. So, there, are, there have been two independent uh, proofs by different approaches. First one by Anna Cariani and Peter Scholze. And another one by Michel Gros and myself. So, I will uh, discuss this in the last lecture. Okay. What I would like to discuss in these uh, three lectures is a categorical uh, variant or uh, uh, statement analog of this uh, hot state decomposition. So, so this categorical variant is known on the name of Piadic Simpson correspondence. It was initiated by Faltings, I think in 2004, 2005, and it was developed by different approaches. So, or at least, uh, so one approach by Takeshi Tsuji, another approach by uh, Michel Gros and myself, and I will report on this. And there are related also works by uh, Liu and Zhu that I will mention in, uh, the link with them at the last lecture. Okay, so uh, what is this correspondence? Roughly speaking, in this introduction, we will describe it more precisely when we will progress in the course. So this correspondence produces an equivalence of categories categories between certain piadic local systems and certain uh, uh, Higgs bundles. So maybe let me, first of all, fix, uh, give you an idea to fix ideas about Higgs bundles. We will see the precise Higgs bundles that will appear later. But to fix ideas, so this notion is due to Hitchin and was developed by Simpson, Donaldson, and many others in the complex context. So to fix ideas, let's say for us, a Higgs bundle on X over S is a pair M theta, or let's say a Higgs module. I can bundle it means I just ask that the module will be a bundle. Is a pair M theta where M is an OX, quasi coherent, let's say, or coherent OX module. And theta is a linear map from M to M tensor over OX, omega 1X over K. Sorry, this is over K, which is OX linear and which satisfies an integrability condition, namely the theta wedge theta, which is now a map from M to M tons omega 2 over k vanishes. 
So it's like a module, it's like a module with an integrable connection, except that in instead of the Leibniz rule, it's OX linear. And hence, you can, in fact, form a complex from such a map, which we call the Dolbo complex. And we have already seen this yesterday. So we can form the OX linear complex This is theta, this is which theta, and this is what we call the Dolbo or the Higgs, some people call it the Higgs complex. Okay, so the Simpson, the periodic Simpson correspondence produces uh, an equivalence of category between certain periodic local systems on X and certain Higgs bundles. Okay? And moreover, for a pair of associated objects, we have a canonical spectral sequence whose initial term is the cohomology, the, the Higgs cohomology, which means the cohomology of this complex, and whose abutment is this, the cohomology of the local system, which generalizes the Hochstedt spectral sequence. Okay, so this is, is, in some sense, our goal. So, now I will tell you a little bit how it's constructed in rough terms, and then we will go slowly uh, into details. So let's start by x. Now, change a little bit notation. Will be a proper and a smooth scheme over S. And let L be a locally constant constructible sheaf of Z mod P and Z modules on x eta bar eta. So, let me change blackboard. To study the cohomology of L on X eta bar, Faltings introduces a ring topos So he introduced a ring topos I will denote it by E tilde B bar and two morphisms of topos. First, a projection from E tilde to the etal topos of X. So this is my notation for the etal topos of X. And a, ma a morphism from the etal topos of the geometric generic fiber of X to E tilde that I call psi. So these are morphisms of topos. I will define all these objects just after the introduction. Let me first tell you how we use this formalism to compute the cohomology. So the first observation is that Psi is in fact locally acyclic for local system, which means that in fact for any j bigger than one, R j Psi lower star of L vanishes. So this is implies that we have for any i bigger than zero, canonical isomorphism between the cohomology of L and the cohomology on E tilde of psi star, lower star of L. Okay? So you may think that this is even maybe more complicated to compute than the original cohomology, but in fact, no. Because Faltings proved using uh, Artin Schreier uh, uh, theory, a refinement of this result. So, Faltings proved the following that, uh, in fact, uh, the canonical morphism from the cohomology of x eta bar with coefficients in L, where we extend scalars to OC going to the cohomology of e, e tilde with coefficient in psi star of L, where we extend scalars now over Zp to this structural shift B bar, is in fact an almost isomorphism. So, you all know what is an almost isomorphism. 
So this is me that the kernel and the co-kernel are killed by the maximal ideal of C. Okay, so now what we will do, we will set this to be M. Let me put N to be psi lower star of L, where we extend scalars to be bar. And we will compute the cohomology of E tilde with coefficients in L using the carton Leray spectral sequence for the projection sigma. So we have the carton Leray spectral sequence, an E2 spectral sequence. H i x eta r j sigma lower star of m, which converges to h i plus j e tilde m. Roughly speaking, now it's really there is a lot of approximation to say this. I will be much more precise later. For certain local systems, L, the complex R sigma lower star of M is the Dolbo complex of the Higgs bundle Higgs bundle on X over S canonically associated to L. And this is precisely the periodic Simpson correspondence. I will tell you which, for which L this is true and how to construct precisely this correspondence. Okay. In fact, it turns out that we cannot construct the correspondence mod P to the N like this but we have to go to the limit on n and invert p. But, so this is a technical complication that we will see later, but there is one case where really things works like this, namely the case where L is the constant shift. And in fact, in this case, the associated Higgs bundle is trivial. which means it's in some sense OX plus the zero Higgs field. And uh, the, 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 the computation is up to some bounded torsion exactly like this. So let me maybe explain it. So in this case, in fact, the canonical morphism from Z mod P and Z to Psi lower star of Z mod P and Z is an isomorphism. So my module M is nothing but just B bar modulo P to the N B bar. So this is not complicated to prove. And now by globalizing Falting's computation of Galois cohomology, we prove that there exists a canonical homomorphism of graded OXN bar algebras uh, on let's say, uh, the etal purpose of the special fiber of S, going from the exterior algebra of the differentials, omega 1 x bar n modulo s bar n. So let me maybe say here that x bar n and s bar n are the reductions of x bar, which is the base change of x to s bar, and s bar mod p to the n. Okay, so there is uh, the exterior algebra of these differentials, except that we have to twist it. I twist it a la Fontaine by psi minus one. I will define it later, but this is just a refinement of the twist. Going to the direct sum of the cohomology of B bar modulo P and B bar. So this morphism is not an almost isomorphism, but its kernel here, whose kernel and co-kernel are killed 
by a fixed power of, of P. Okay? So if we go to the limit on N and invert P, this spectral sequence gives us the hot state spectral sequence. So this is, is, in fact, what we will do with general coefficients. And how we do it? So how we do this, in general, the correspondence between L and the Higgs bundle will be constructed on the model of, Falti of uh, Fontaine's correspondences using a period ring that I will call C of E tilde. So we'll have an admissibility on the top of E tilde. So a first, maybe natural choice for E tilde, for this period ring, you may think this is, should be B odd state. So here does the ring. Okay, so this is in fact can work in the affine case or in, in Scholz's approach. But in our case, this is, has problem because this is a QP algebra. And it's not easy to shifify in faulting stoppers QP algebras. For this, we need to get integral models. So we need an integral model of BHT. And this is precisely what we produce. So C is, in fact, is an integral model of BHT. So we construct it using deformations. And uh, for this, we get inspiration from uh, Falting's original approach, and also the work of August Vologotsky. Who, in some sense, work in an analog situation modulo P. Okay, once we have the integral model, the idea is that we can enlarge it. And we will enlarge it by taking a weak periodic completion. I will explain it. This weak periodic completion has, in fact, nice cohomological properties, which lead to a correspondence between, to uh, an equivalence of categories between admissible objects. So uh, this C will lead to uh, an equivalence of categories between admissible, admissible objects. So I will be much more precise later. So the admissible objects, we will call them Dolbo modules and solvable Higgs bundles. And since we enlarge the period ring, so C, uh, weak completion of C is larger than B of state, the admissibility condition is weaker. So in some sense, we can apply the periodic Simpson correspondence to much more representation than just hot state representation. And in fact, Faltings for curves suggested a, a way to extend the correspondence to all local systems, to all representations by descent, because any uh, representation of the fundamental group became admissible over a finite et al. covering. So I will not discuss this descent aspect, but I would like to mention that there was a recent progress on it by uh, Dashin Shu, who will report on it on Friday. OK, so what I will tell you today, so here maybe is the plan of my, yeah, this is, is the, the ORT strategy. <laughs> OK, so this is just the plan of what I will say. I will first explain the period ring C. Then I will discuss the equivalence of categories between admissible objects. I will prove that it's compatible with the natural cohomologies, which lead to a generalization of the hot state spectral sequence. Then I will discuss the functoriality of the correspondence by proper direct image, which leads to a generalization of the relative hot state spectral sequence. And finally, I will discuss the relation with hot state local system. OK? OK, so let me start. And the first thing I have to explain is what is faulting stoppers. And I have to discuss faulting's main comparison theory. OK. So let x be a smooth. Ah, OK, before I start, in fact, in all our work with Michel, we work with schemes with 
toric singularities using, using logarithmic geometry. But for simplicity, I will work, I will discuss in this lecture just smooth schemes. Okay? So let X be a smooth S scheme. And let me denote by E the category of morphisms V to U of schemes above the canonical morphism from the geometric generic fiber to X. It means just commutative diagrams like this, such that U to X is et al, and V to the geometric generic fiber of U is finite et al. Okay, so this is, is a, a nice category. And it's convenient to look at this category as a fibered category. So I will denote the functor by pi from E over the etal site of X, which means etal morphisms over X, by just mapping V to U to U. Okay, so this is, is a fibered functor. And the fiber over an object U is in fact just finite et al. So if you take U, an object of the et al site, then uh, pi minus one of U, this fiber cat uh, category is nothing but just finite et al, put F here, over U et a bar. Okay, canonically equivalent to this. So we will equip this, equip it, with the et al topology. And I will denote by u fet the associated topos. So I remind you that, for instance, if u eta bar is connected, and if I fix y bar a geometric point of u eta bar, this topos is nothing but just the classifying topos of uh, the profinite group U eta bar, the etal fundamental group, pointed by Y bar. So representation, discrete representations of pi one. So in a certain way, this category is just one way to put all these representations in family. And to study the such representations in family, we put a nice topology on E that we call the co-vanishing topology. So we equip E with the co-vanishing topology. So what is the co-vanishing topology? So this is, is the topology generated by coverings let's say vi to ui going to v to u i and e of two types. So the first type, so I start by maybe the, cup, the vertical type. Okay. So this is, means that u is equal to ui for all i in i, and then uh, vi to v, uh, uh, vi to v is a covering. Okay. And the second type is the Cartesian type, which means that I have now ui to u is a covering for the etal topology of x. And now I assume that vi should be the base change of v over ui. But I don't allow uh, coverings on v and on u to be independent. Okay, so either it's vertical or Cartesian, and I take the topology generated by all of this. So I will denote by E tilde the topos of sheaves of sets on E for this topology. 
So it may look a little bit abstract the first time, but in fact, it's very easy to describe shifts on this topos. So let me, and you can just work with shifts like concretely, like I will describe them now. So to give a shift, F on E, which means uh, for the co-vanishing topology, amounts to give a collection of sheaves. I will call it, uh, maybe I'll write it down better. To give a collection of sheaves for every object which is, uh, for every scheme which is et al over x, I should give myself Fu, which is a finite et al, topos on u eta bar. And moreover, if I have a morphism from u prime to u, let's say f, I should give myself a morphism from fu to the direct image of f u prime. So this uh, transition morphism should satisfy a co-cycle condition for the composition of morphisms that you can guess plus a gluing condition for coverings in the etal site of X. So roughly speaking, a sheaf in E tilde is a sheaf of finite etal sheaves. Okay? So just a sheaf of finite etal sheaves. Okay, so it's really very concrete. So some, another an important property of this topos is the fact that it has, so it's coherent, it, ha it has enough points, but we can describe uh, a nice family of uh, points, namely any specialization, y bar going to x bar, from y bar a geometric point of x eta bar, to x bar a geometric point of x, induces a point that I will denote rho of y bar to x bar for a reason I will not explain. So a point of E tilde. And in fact, the collection of these points is conservative. So the collection of these points is conservative so we can really work with them. Okay, and this topos is related to the usual et al topos by two morphisms. So there is, first of all, a projection to the etal topos of X, and sorry, the stock of, we can compute it easily. I, in terms of uh, the stalks of the others and the uh, limits. But I will not describe it here. We, I will describe the stalk of uh, one interesting shift, which is the structural shift. So, and there is a natural morphism from the etal topos of X eta bar to Palting topos, which we call psi. So this is called the conier bicycle map. This is a projection. So they are defined explicitly by, their, by the pullback on objects of the site. So let me say if u, so if u is an object of the site, which means it's an etal map over x, then psi upper star of u is nothing but just the Cartesian object. So the sheaf associated to this, to this in some sense, Cartesian object of E. And if v goes to u, is an object of E, then psi upper star of V to U is nothing but just V. So V is finite etal over U eta bar, so it's just etal over X eta bar. So you get a map like that. Okay, it turns out that this defines morphism of topos. And I can, in fact, uh, tell you a little bit the meaning of these two maps. So let's start by maybe this one. So this projection, in fact, remember I told you that the topos E tilde is a way to shift, to, to put representations in, in family, representation of finite fundamental groups in family. So this map, in fact, is a shiftification of the cohomology of this family. So more precisely, 
if f now collection of any sheaf is a collection of sheaves, so this is an abelian uh, group of e tilde. So then, in fact, the higher direct image by sigma of f is canonically isomorphic to the sheaf associated. to the pre-sheaf, which maps u to hi u eta bar fet f u. Okay? So for each u, f u is a finite etal sheaf, which means it's a representation of the fundamental group. So you can take its cohomology. And because there is transition morphisms, this is formed naturally a pre-sheaf on the etal side of x. And if you take the associated sheaf, it's a precisely Re sigma lower star. So Re sigma lower star is a sheafification of uh, Galois cohomology. So already you can see how we will proceed. All the computation you know, the local computation of faultings of Galois cohomology will be converted into computation of uh, cohomology of sigma. Yes? Sorry, the, uh, the, the, uh, the upper A, which, which uh, uh, sigma star you mean. Yeah, yeah. So associated chief, you take just the associated chief. Yeah. What is finite etal here? The, the, no, so uh, the finite etal should, be, so this is, is an object, U eta bar is definitely finite etal over U eta bar. So it's just the identity. The condition is that V should be finite etal over U eta bar. Okay? No, it's definitely not necessarily a shift, but you take, a sh you take the associated shift. Okay. So let me describe now a little bit the morphism psi, or let's tell you a little bit the properties of psi. So the main feature of Psi is that it's locally acyclic for local systems. And then we have, in fact, the following important proposition, which says that for any locally constant constructible uh, she abelian sheaf, torsion abelian sheaf, sorry, let's see uh, how we call it, F, on x eta bar et al, rj psi lower star of f vanishes for every j bigger than one. So this result, which is due to Faltings and Ashinger, so I will, uh, is a consequence. So this is, is a consequence of the following fact. So this is what, in fact, Faltings and Ashinger proved, is that for any geometric point, x bar of x over the special point, over the plus point s. If you take x till the uh, x underline, so this is, will be the strict tensorization of uh, the strict localization of x at x bar, then the ge geometric uh, generic fiber of the localization is a k pi 1 scheme. Okay? So, this result implies easily uh, this statement, and it was proved by Faltings, generalizing results of uh, Artin in SGA4 for the smooth case, and extended, generalized by Ashinger for the log smooth case. So, Okay, as I said, this is, reduces the, uh, the computation of the cohomology, the etal cohomology to a computation in faulting stoppers. But in fact, we need to go to compute the cohomology in E tilde, we need to develop Artin Schreier theory. And for this, we need a structural shift. So let me define this structural shift. So for an object E, V, E to in E, I will denote by, uh, Sorry, u bar v. So this is, will be the normalization 
of u bar in v. Then I can define b bar to be just the global section of this scheme. This is defined naturally pre sheaf and the nice fact is that b bar is a sheaf for the co-vanishing topology. And like any sheaf, I can write it as a collection of sheaves Okay, which are finite et al. And I will tell you a little bit what these sheaves are if, let's say, u is affine. So this is a, an et al, et al over x, an affine et al scheme over x. So, first of all, I will uh, denote by vi. So first of all, I fix y bar, a geometric point of u at a bar, and I will uh, denote by vi the universal cover of u at a bar at y bar. So vi is now finite et al over u et a bar, which is the generic fiber of u bar. u bar is just u base change from s to s bar. And I can normalize u bar in v bar, so I call it maybe ui. So this is, is an affine scheme I denote by ri. So these schemes then form an inductive system and I can take its inductive limit as usual. I call it r bar. And in fact, this R bar is exactly the stalk of B bar U at Y bar. And this has pi 1, uh, so this has representations of pi 1 U at a bar Y bar. So this shift B bar U is nothing than just this representation. Okay? And we put all of them in family. Okay, and as I said, Paltings proved. His main comparison theorem using Artin Schreier's theory. So maybe let me just recall it here. So if x over s is proper, then for any, uh, how to say, for any locally constant constructible uh, sheaf of z mod p and z modules on x eta bar et al, and for any i, the canonical map from h i, x eta bar et al, uh, let me see if I call it f, f, where I extend scalars, o c going to h i, e tilde, uh, psi lower star of f, where I extend scalars, to B bar is an almost isomorph. In fact, this is called Falting's main comparison theorem because all PID comparison theorems proved by Falting's are deduced from this one. Okay, now I sh will introduce the ring C, the period ring C. And for this, I need to introduce the torso of deformation. Okay, so I remind you that for any uh, A, which is a ZP algebra, such that A mod P A is not equal to zero, Fontaine defined, associates, uh, so two things. So first of all, the ring that now we co call F A flat, which is, Projective limit, the perfection of A mod P A. So the transition maps are just the absolute Frobenius. So this is a perfect, perfect ring. And he associates also a map called theta from the Witt vectors of A flat to the periodic completion of A, which maybe just. 
give you the formula, very explicit. So if you start with a width vector, then theta of x, so I write it and then explain it, is the limit of x tilde 0 m p to the m plus p x tilde 1 m p to the m minus 1 plus p to the m x tilde m m. Here for each x i uh, x n, I write it as projective system of x n m. So this is, I see it in a flat projective system of elements modulo uh, in a mod p, and if x is in a mod p a, uh, x tilde is a lifting in a, and the formula is well defined independent of this lifting. So if the absolute Frobenius is surjective, theta is surjective. So this is, will be our main, uh, in some sense, uh, object to define, to do deformations. So there are two interesting cases. The first interesting case is already uh, OK bar. If we do this construction for OK bar, so usually we call this OK bar flat. So this is, is in fact uh, uh, a non-discrete evaluation ring of height 1. I will denote k bar flat, it's a fraction field. This is explain the notation. And I will fix, as usual, Pn, uh, a sequence of elements of OK bar, such that P not equal P, and Pn plus 1 to the P is equal to Pn. So this sequence defines an element in OK bar flat. I will call it var pi. So this is, is just the associated element module P. And then I will denote by, so now I can define Xi. So this Xi is just the Teschmiller Tish, lift of var Xi minus P. So this is, is an element of the vid vectors of OK bar flat. And it turns out that this is in fact a generator of the kernel of theta. So we can consider the following interesting uh, first order uh, infinitesimal neighborhood of the closed immersion theta. I call it o, A2 OK bar. So this is, is just the vid vectors of OK bar flat modulo ker theta squared. And in fact, this element is not a zero divisor in the vid vectors. So this algebra is just an extension of OC by an ideal of square zero, which is isomorphic to OC. We have a, an exact sequence like this. Here's theta. Okay. In fact, so I think I don't have time, but it's it's uh, it's not complicated to see that uh, OC of one is canonically isomorphic to p to the power one over p minus one psi OC. So uh, via the logarithm, so this psi is just a variation or improvement of state twist. Okay. So the second example I would like to mention is related to the ring uh, to the algebra B bar. So let me assume now that X is Spec R, this is affine smooth, smooth S scheme, which is small in faulting sense. Small in the sense of faultings. Of faultings. What does it mean? So it means that there exists uh, an etal map from x to a torus over s okay. t1 plus minus 1, td plus minus 1. Moreover, I will assume that the special fiber is not empty. So I will consider now the algebra 
which is the stalk. So I fix y bar, a geometric point of x eta bar, and then I consider the algebra b bar x y bar. The stalk of the of b bar x. This is a finite eta top uh, sheaf on x eta bar fit, and I take its stalk. So this is, a, if you remember, I described it explicitly as the algebra r bar. We can apply the previous construction in this context, and I will denote by a2 of r bar just the vid vectors of r bar flat modulo care theta square. And in fact, in this case also, the kernel of theta is generated by the same element, psi. So we get an extension of the periodic completion of r bar, here theta, by the periodic completion of r bar as an ideal of square zero, which is just the multiplication by psi. Okay. The construction is functorial. So I have the following diagram. So I have spec r bar hat in spec of this thickening, first order thickening. I have down spec of OC in spec of A2 OK bar. So I will put something in middle in the middle. This diagram is in fact commutative. Okay? Just because the construction is functorial. So here I can put in fact X tensor over OK OC. And to go further, in fact, I need to fix a deformation. Call it X tilde. So we are in the affine case, there is always a smooth deformation. So we fix a smooth E2 OK bar deformation of X tense over OK OC. It's like in the linear illusion, we fix a lifting over Z mod P square. Here we fix a lifting here, smooth lifting here. So what is missing is this arrow. So in fact, what I will do is that I will take all possible arrows. So this is will lead me to a sheaf that I call L. So I will call this L. So this is will be the Zariski sheaf, in fact, the sheaf on uh, spec R bar hat, whose sections, let's say whose local sections, are just the dotted arrows that the complete the diagram. Diagram, uh, so it remains, uh, so it, uh, it remains commutative. Okay. And in fact, this is very easy to describe. This is easy, in fact. L is a torsor. Under the module, home, R, omega 1, R over OK, in psi R bar hat. Nothing, really nothing mysterious about this. And such a torsor is very easy to describe. So what we do, first we introduce F. So this is, will be the R bar module of affine functions. on L, so you can guess easily what it means. This module is in fact naturally, canonically an extension. So this F is in fact naturally an extension of psi minus one omega one R over OK, extend scalars over R to R bar hat by r bar hat. So this is correspond to the linear term and this is correspond to the uh, constant term, okay? And we can now form the following. We'll denote it by C. So this is, will be the inductive limit 
over all m of the symmetric powers over the nth symmetric power over r bar hat of the r module f. And what are uh, the transition morphisms? So the transition morphism, I map x1 tensor tans xm to 1 tans x1 tans xm. And the one is the one which is coming from here. Okay? So this is automatically an R bar at algebra. And in fact, it turns out that L is representable by spec of this ring C. So there really, really, there is nothing, nothing more to say from the geometric point uh, in some sense on, on this situation. But we have an action of the fundamental group. And this is, will make the situation more interesting. So pi one of x eta bar acts on r bar hat. Hence, it acts on, let's say, a2 r bar hat. And hence, it acts also on uh, the extension of affine function on the torso, on the extension of affine functions, and on the ring C by ring homomorphism. And all these actions are continuous. So these actions here and here are continuous for the periodic topology. Okay? So this is, will be our main object. So the fact is now that this representation of the fundamental group is a model, an integral model of Bioch state of a Hud, which amounts to say that uh, Falting's extension there, uh, sorry, this extension, which I call the Higgs state extension, is in fact a refinement of Falting's extension. Okay, so we will use it. I have two minutes to finish. So we will use this, uh, ex this uh, ring to, uh, so what we will do? So first of all, we will define a kind of uh, weak periodic completion, which I will explain later. Weak periodic completion. So we enlarge this ring. This weak periodic completion has, in fact, nice cohomological properties, which lead automatically to an equivalence of categories between admissible objects. And this notion of admissibility now is called Dolbu. Dolbu is the associated admissibility. It's in fact a weak, weaker, so this is a weaker admissibility condition. Then hot state, because we enlarge the period ring. Okay, so this is precisely can be done exactly like I'm saying in the affine case. We can really develop everything in the affine case. And this is what we did in uh, the second chapter of the first book. But when you do it in the affine case, you cannot glue it in faulting stoppers. So I will not proceed like this now because we need to do it in faulting stoppers. So just after the break, we will shifify this construction and define the correspondence in faulting stop. And I will stop for five minutes. So, any questions or comments? Yeah, this. Uh, what does weak PA decompletion mean? Okay, so the weak, weak completion is coming from these coordinates in some sense. So if you split this extension, this is will become uh, like the polynomial ring over the differentials, and it's the weak completion relatively to this coordinate. So we will see exactly what it means, but it's playing on that. So it's like I replace polynomials with a, a so you, you, series conversion to zero p degree. Yeah, but with some convergence conditions. Uh -huh. Which is not just converging to zero. It's more complicated. Uh, so in some, uh, uh, no, no, no. You, you have really to, to, to so do, it's, it's, like, it's like the dagger. It's the, 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 the dagger in, uh, uh -huh. in the usual uh, construction a la uh, Bertolo, or, okay? We, we will see it. In fact, uh, I, I will define it exactly, okay? So, any other questions or comments? Okay, so then uh, some questions uh, from Zoom. Uh, 